Welcome, subscribers. We are talking with Wayne Herschel, and we're going to continue talking a little bit about the uh, the Forbidden Star Map, uh, the the Star Map of Hiram Abiff, as it were. There are a few things that we didn't have time to get to in the first segment, and we're also going to, of course, talk more about the Solomon Key, the the other website that we mentioned that right at the end. That's much more fascinating stuff to kind of get into. Um, but I, I guess I want to begin, Wayne, talking a little bit about the uh, what you refer to in your uh, article on the Forbidden Star Map about the the breakthrough in Egypt uh, and, and what how, how that came about. Tell tell us about that. Sure, um, it would be nice if we could prove uh, this 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 Hiram uh, image in. And if it's the horizon and the way the stars are positioned, what did it, what did it look like in ancient Egypt? Um, I did this three years ago, funny enough, and I, I was so tempted to put it in my book, but then I realized you know, it's too similar to the Freemason story, and um, I don't need that. Uh, I don't need to go into into forbidden sort of stories, and uh, as a self-published author, you know, to, to go that route. So um, it was left out. And I regret it to a certain degree because um, my story has been looked at as being still possibly coincidence by some some scholars um, because I've only produced half my story. It's, it's only my book one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you still yes. have another seven star maps to look at to go with it, which <laughs> we'll have to wait in time. Um, yeah, so um, looking at uh, what the stars look like in ancient Egypt. Um, at the time, I wouldn't even go back you know, 17,000 years ago, but my computer won't let me. <laughs> but anywhere in the northern hemisphere, the way that these stars rise on the eastern horizon is exactly the same as how it appears in that Hiram Abyss star map. By that I mean the orientation of the Pleiades in that weird position pointing downwards. Mm-hmm. Um, we have an image on that uh, on my website showing the Sphinx looking across the Nile mm-hmm. and um, the positioning of the, the blazing star. Um, we have the pyramid correlations in the area called Abyssur, repeating that star pattern as well. And, of course, they, they use an obelisk to match the blazing star. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, this is conclusive. But, you know, to a lot of people, they will say, uh, good, you know, it was just luck. It's a 360 to 1 chance, big deal, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, this, uh, <laughs> to me, those statistics are pretty impressive. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and... yeah so, um, so the... it, it's as simple as that. So um, in ancient Egypt, mm-hmm. that's how the stars looked. And uh, it's it's marked exactly on the eastern horizon. I think I did a test on my computer started this at seven thousand years ago, mm-hmm. or five thousand years ago. It would, both ways, it works uh, almost identical to the image that you see there. Wow, that's amazing. So we have the the Pleiades uh, to to the right, and and uh, and all of that is is mimicked, so to speak. Yeah. So what? Uh, by the way, what what, uh, what what software do you use to to kind of look at that? Yeah, Starry Night uh, Pro. Um, it's about four years old now, but uh, I've looked at the new ones. It's, it hasn't really changed that much. It's, mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. quite uh, accurate. You can see star movements, which is quite important for my research. But so, um, it shows the positions, and you can go back in time, look at the horizon from Egypt as your viewpoint, and yeah. lo and behold. Wow, really? And and uh, how, how far back can you actually go with this? 7,000 years. That's the problem. I'd oh, love to really? go back further. That's strange because, in a way, I guess. Well, I guess it is in a way related to uh, the. Well, it shouldn't be related to any kind of memory or something like that. I mean, it, because this is just about the calculation itself. Meaning that if you can, you know, if you have <laughs> from point A to point B, from there, you basically you can calculate all the way, uh, you know, uh, forward or backward. I guess. But do you know why they haven't? Uh, you know, why it isn't possible to go further? There must be something to do with the program, but um, somebody who did a test for me, uh, astronomer, I said to him, give me a, um, a 17,000 year um, similar date, same same part of the year, obviously, because seasons make a difference. Mm-hmm. Um, it's close to the summer solstice, and um, he had the same same effect, so it doesn't really change that much. Hmm. Um, precession doesn't seem to make that much of a, a big difference, uh, but of course, you know, precession is a, is a much longer time frame. Though. I don't think it's really... That much difference when it arises in the way it lifts on the horizon, it's still pretty much that that, that layout. That's fascinating. Uh, an, another thing in in relation to Egypt here, uh, the gold-capped obelisk solar monument uh, at Ab- Ab- is it called Abusir or Abusir or Abusir? Abusir. Yeah. Okay, T- tell us about that. What's what's the story behind that one? I mean, originally we've always well, I say we history has always imagined the ultimate Egyptian monument is the Sphinx. Um, 
it's because that's what's really all that's left that in the the great pyramid and and uh, if we could understand the meaning of the Sphinx, it should explain the pyramids. I think it's only the key in, in understanding what the pyramids are for, as the Sphinx is probably watching the rising of stars and almost speaking out, saying, you know, I am Leo. I look at my reflection on the horizon because it looks like a lion upright. It's mm -hmm. a side elevation image. And um, it shows that all the pyramids are stars, and this is what we should look at and look at all the pyramids of stars mm -hmm. and um, spot the oddities and... Historians have quite uh, clearly shown that one of them stood out out of the whole 50 of Lower Egypt is really unique, and it's the most important monument, and it's not anywhere near the Leo area. It's in the middle of the star map, mm. and it was the, the obelisk uh, monument, which is a small pyramid with a giant obelisk on top of it. I think it's quite a clever way. If, if small pyramids you know, correlate with small stars and big pyramids are big stars, if the most important one is a small star, to make it look better, you put a giant obelisk on top of it <laughs> and um, put a gold capstone on. And if you could see the size of the capstone that once went on there, mm. it's, oh, I'd say four times bigger than what was on the Great Pyramid. Really? Massive capstone. It's, um Yeah, the, well, the, if, if the reconstructed images by historians is correct, this is probably the largest capstone. There we go. Um, it would have looked like a lighthouse. Uh, you can imagine <laughs> sun shining off a 45-degree gold edge. At midday, yeah. maybe the midday sun, um, perhaps by the foot of the Sphinx, would have been this beautiful burst of golden light on the solstice as well. Hmm. I'm pretty sure that would have worked out uh, and calculated. The Egyptians could build the pyramid with the degree of accuracy in their stonework. It's quite likely that uh, if they revered the sun on the summer solstice, um, when, by the way, it's, it's at a time when the Pleiades um, and Taurus are behind the sun, that's kind of... Amazing that our most important stars here are behind the sun. It's kind mm. of celebrating the two together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we have this uh, sun probably shining off, off the top of the capstone, I would guess. That's, mm. that's just an opinion. It might be wrong, but mm. um, it would be pretty dramatic if it did. Yeah, fascinating. And uh, I guess you also mentioned the, the fact that um, all the all the smaller pyramids, the, the 50 or so pyramids of, of Lower Egypt, uh, actually yeah. re represented a ring around this uh, obelisk, right? Yeah, this is, this was something I did well, 1997. I, I, when Revol's book first came out on the three pyramids of Giza, as an amateur astronomer then, it was great. I could test out his theory because I heard astronomers were saying, oh, no, not possible, not possible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The three in a row, maybe, but everything else, not possible. I simply got out uh, a star atlas. I didn't even have a computer at that time um, and just compared the whole Milky Way, drew it out and on a a simple piece of straight paper because the Nile is kind of straightish, whereas the hemisphere interpretations of the whole Milky Way are curved, which is a bit of a problem. I straightened it all out pretty much in the same alignment with the river and uh, saw the larger stars, made little X's on the paper, and you know, it just started just unfolding. On my lounge floor, there it was, and um, the whole Milky Way is represented there. Hmm. And the ancients were so clever, they changed the scale so that the little sun-like star, the only monument that's sun-like out of all the 50 <laughs> the rest are not sun-like the one little sun-like star is at the exact middle and it's an obelisk um, i mean how easy is that to see <laughs> okay sure that's what it used to look like it, because we have all these ruins today um you know that sort of meaning is kind of lost and that's probably why it's never been uh, deciphered hmm fascinating and the uh you know that this unique pleiades interpretation uh, and and the and the blazing star uh, again that we're talking about the middle one now in the in the in the star map star. Uh -huh. is 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 recorded at uh, two other f uh, famous Egyptian sites also isn't that right? Um, two the, other Egyptian sites the, in the um, uh, Senmut tomb and on the zodiac disc course, at yeah, the not not as pyramids correct yes I'm sorry I'm thinking of just uh, you know going looking at other pyramid ruins um, mm -hmm. I don't know there's some other pyramid ruins which I think are not even related but yes in the tombs. Um, not just tombs, papyrus. Um, I have a lot of references in the book. There's, there's coffin lids that show um, the important uh, uh, leg of the bull, which is scholars believe was the, the Big Dipper, which I completely challenged because of the one coffin lid that I was lucky to find. Mm -hmm. Filled in the stars exactly to the T. They were the right positioning. Um, but the same tomb, of course, is back to you know comparing it uh, to the Hiram of the Star map. We have exactly the same format and uh, I think it's uh, 
maybe why that tomb is not available for public view. <laughs> really? Is that so? <laughs> Conspiracy <Huh>. theories. It's, <laughs> it's quite deep, eh? I mean, I've got to admit, you know, we, we stood by the, the door. We weren't even allowed in, but I, I obviously had uh, images from the first uh, research that was done on that, that tomb. Mm -hmm. um, and the guy told me that um, it's flaking away. It goes down so damn deep. It's, you know, one of the deepest tombs. It goes right down deep into the Valley of the Kings. Okay. Um, that, that huge um, uh, hill range whatever it is, mm -hmm. and it was one um, researcher that said that um, he thinks that it just goes right through and maybe comes out the other side. It's just so crumbly and, and fallen on the other side of it, um, apart from the main chamber, that um, there's a good chance that um, it even reaches water down there somewhere. It's got, it goes down so deep. Sheesh, really? Is this in a lot down there, but it's very flaky. If you look at the photograph I've got in my book, um, Tinmut uh, Tomb, is very, the sides are, looks like uh, almost... Uh, like a slate, um, and it's very crumbly. Okay, and is is this uh, where is this located? Is this in the Valley of the Kings, or where is this? Just pretty close there. Um, it's near the um, Hatshepsut uh, monument, the Hatshepsut Temple, the grand uh, area of Der El Bari. Mm -hmm. um, everybody goes there to see the beautiful Hatshepsut Temple that's against the hill. But um, the Senma tomb is kind of hidden down um, to the right hand side of the main causeway. Um, you need to go with a guide there, and it looks like you're going into a, uh, a dump. I mean, there's rubbish there. You won't believe it. It's, it's, it's not, it's not a, a, a looked-after monument. There's a big, uh, uh, what do you call it, a steel door mm -hmm. blocking it from, from being entered. And um, we were standing in about uh, a foot and a half deep of trash just to do the photographs Sheesh. of what you know, the front of the tomb looks like. <laughs> really? Yeah. Sheesh, that's, that's no good at all. <laughs> yeah. It's lost. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's sad. Okay. And then, uh, of course, uh, the the second one that that mimics this uh, the the blazing star, I guess, is the uh, at the Dendera zodiac disc, right? Yeah. Um, I didn't think it included the um, the extra little star. I always thought there was just the one main star, which I had in my book. Mm -hmm. um, and then just before publishing, I realized, oh gosh, the second one is also there, and I just squashed it in uh, on a little add-on piece at the end of the book showing that, the, that there are two stars being depicted mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that are next to this leg formation that um, ties in with this hippo goddess, um, which is the goddess of childbirth, and mm -hmm. very very neat Genesis uh, scene where this, this leg constellation mm -hmm. comes from the womb, mm -hmm. of this creator hippo, you know, yeah, very that's simple right. in teaching. Yeah. Uh, I would say it might be a lot of... Uh, one of these texts that people change over over years, and the Egyptians simplified it and made it more palatable. Mm. Um, with the kind of a, a mythology aspect, and um, yeah, but it's it's a very clever way of teaching um, the birth of humanity from this, this constellation. It, it's using images without words. It's, it's effective in that sense, although it's for some people it creates uh, almost like a fairy tale story. <laughs> That's fascinating, and. And again, we we mentioned before that that this was mini, mimicked at uh, not only Tikal but also Sidonia, and and again there is more more places that you have uh, listed or uh, images of on your on your website. Uh, one is even in England. There is a same three relations between uh, Stonehenge and and two other uh, places. Would you want to want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, Stonehenge. Um, uh, initially, when I started, there was no known um, direct connection between the pyramid civilizations and Stonehenge and um, there were some really weak theories trying, where others have tried to put the two together and um, nothing really was available uh, three years ago um, that made sense and I thought to myself okay if Stonehenge is the ultimate monument in, in, in England um, is this the exit that marks the spot? How hard is it just to you know have a look around? What's that around Stonehenge? Mm -hmm. Is there a depiction of the seven stars of the Pleiades? Then I've got somewhere to start. And when I visited Stonehenge, there was nothing available, no books I had at that time that sh 